So for me, it seems like, uh, or for me, it is the obvious topic how to structure uh, Java E or Jakarta E application. So for me, it's just only one way to do so. But surprisingly, I get lots of questions uh, over and over again at the Airhex TV show, so the monthly show, um, how to structure, how to deal with shared code, how to structure microservices, do we need DTOs and stuff like that. And uh, so I think um, it is uh, better to answer all the questions at once. And the session is recorded, so I hope it will help in the future. So uh, we have a mic, so you can ask me whatever you like. So we have one great question, so you will have to ask during the show, not before. And um, I'm working with Java since 1995, uh, and 1997 I'm freelancer, exactly, not the other way around. And um, before that, I did a little bit uh, C++, and I started with Z Z ZX Spectrum, so as a UK computer, and basic, of course. And uh, so um, the AX TV is probably, in this show, the most interesting one, because uh, how it works is I have like a gist on a GitHub, and people asking questions, and I answer all the questions at once. And it, the show is running for five years, and it, was, it never ends. So I, I thought one point of time we can stop, but no. And the deal is I never answer a question via email. So it's a huge time server for me. I always redirect there. And uh, my blog is my notepad, and AHX.fm is a podcast. There's no, uh, uh, and there are uh, lots of uh, online courses, because I get lots of questions. And yeah, why I like Java E? I uh, really like Java E and always like that. Uh, why? I'm a freelancer. And one way uh, not to become crazy is just try to learn one thing and go deeper and not learn 500 times uh, things at the same time. And, uh, and if 80% of the things will disappear, um, this is really hard. Uh, with Java E, there was like a you know, common theme, just focus on standards. And uh, if standards are not enough, then broaden the, the focus or horizon. And surprisingly, uh, Java E or J2E back then was, uh, in, or unsurprisingly or unfortunately for me, because sometimes it was boring, it was always good enough for, for common projects. Um, so what I would like to talk about, this is the questions, and um, you, you can ask whatever you like, but this is what I came up with, is reuse about modularization, how to package, how it looks inside, what to do with exceptions, uh, whether we need patterns or not, uh, how to integrate domain-specific libraries into your POM, and cross-cutting function, matrix login, and configuration. So I get the questions in, uh, on every project. So I just gathered the questions, and now I will try to, uh, to, uh, to answer at once. Um, any other questions or topics you would like to hear? So this is like DTOs, a specific topic about DTOs, and um, anything else? So is, is it complete somehow? Shared libraries, shared jars, and microservices, also a common one, right? Everyone would like to have a microservice and then say, okay, but where I can put my jars? So, okay, no uh, microservice means no jars. Um, so now, what I see in projects. So let's start with a project setup. Uh, and we had sessions, so let's do flights. It does not matter, really, what we do. Hopefully, it will. I forgot to disable the internet. We don't need the internet. So my impression of code one is uh, the Java name is gone, so wireless LAN is gone, and coffee as well, right? No coffee, no wireless, and we have code now. So, um, um, okay, we have to uh, wait a little bit. So um, what happens now, it tries to reach the Maven uh, Central, and if the internet is slow, it's the worst possible case. Uh, yeah, you see timeouts, right? One of the pattern circuit breaker. It should uh, recognize there is no wireless LAN. And now it went to my local repository, so it was fast. So this is not a microservice project, it's just Maven. So I created one project right now. So now, uh, to, to make it faster, what I see in projects, and this is, uh, so I'm now in the, uh, yeah, com, airhex is company name, it would be like Oracle, whatever you have. And then I would either, for instance, I would introduce something like flights 42, this is like the project name, right? Company project name. And then now the, the fun starts. So um, in rare cases, some, sometimes we have still GSF, Java server faces. And this is actually a good thing for admin, or, uh, admin user interfaces. They are crazy productive. So you can create the whole admin interface with prime faces in a weekend. So it's incredible. It's not pixel perfect, but very productive. So in this particular case, I will, I will introduce business and presentation, two layers. But this is uncommon. Usually, we just have REST and nothing else, right? If we <coughs> only have REST and WebSockets, 
I don't need to introduce any, any more packages. So what I focus from the beginning right now is on the business. So, but what I see in projects is like, one, they introduce one layer called REST, um, just to emphasize that uh, there's RESTful content inside. By the way, I reviewed lots of applications, and if someone mentions already REST, there is never RESTful. It's like a remote procedure call on steroids. So this is what I see inside REST. Then uh, they introduce exceptions. Then uh, what I see is uh, DAO. Yeah, it doesn't let me so create it, which is a good thing. Make uh, a DAO. In rare cases, uh, DTO. Then uh, model sounds nice, entity or domain. It really depends on the project. And um, then, uh, of course, we have some common. And then uh, to make it a little bit more exciting, we have util, because if, if there's not enough, you get util, there's no kidding. This is like what I see over and over again. And then uh, sometimes uh, we have infrastructure, infrastructure, and I forgot foundation. But this is like, uh, and, and of course, if there is infrastructure, there's no foundation, but there's stuff like this. So, and um, if you switch to, um, to my project, and I would like to reopen, this is called uh, junk for a reason. Um, we have late common DAOs, and this is actually very common. So if you remember my code reviews, this is what I see a lot. And, um, and when I ask why, so it, uh, they, my impression is that, that there is one architect which created this structure 20 years ago, and it believes that uh, all developers are stupid, and therefore uh, they need structure just to put stuff in these buckets. So this is my impression. One, what happens in large projects? In large projects, you end up having like 500 DAOs in the DAO package, uh, 1,000 DTOs in the DTO package, and probably 500 entities in the entity package. And uh, developers recognize something is wrong with the structure, and they start to substructure the packages. So you get on the DAO, like, you know, probably flight or passenger or something like this. And in DTO, there's something else. And um, if I ask where you saw something like this, I never get an answer. So uh, what we should do is we should launch some investigation. Somewhere in the internet, there should be a template for this. And I never saw this. So I, I couldn't find the roots of the problem. So and the most funny thing is most of the project, oh, no kidding. I, I forgot something I saw recently. Of course, interfaces. I couldn't believe it. But there is interfaces and enums. So um, in recent uh, uh, code review, enums and interfaces. So. Um, what I call it is bureaucratic design. Like, you know the movie Brazil? So it has probably roots in the movie, so you have to watch it. And this is like, a, a, yeah, this is a, a cult movie from, I don't know, 90s, I guess. So now, um, one uh, external supplier uh, provided something like this, and I say, this is completely wrong. So I don't know any company on Earth, which uh, probably I don't know some consulting companies, but no business company, uh, who earns money creating DTOs or DAOs. You cannot be in a bank and say, I will create 200 DAOs today, and uh, now, uh, now we are set, right? So it's actually not in my world. So um, what you learned, what I learned in the university and school <coughs> is somehow object-oriented programming. So maybe object-oriented programming is outdated. Now we have functional programming, which is also uh, the idea is to, to gather uh, business functionality somewhere or organized around concepts. So what I would do or what I do is I forbid all the stuff because I cannot understand where is the added value of creating DTOs, DAOs, commons, utils. And util is diverse. If you allow util in shortest amount of time, you will find all the classes where no one has idea where they belong to in the util package. Example, Java util. Collections, functions, dates, whatever uh, you can imagine is in the util package. So this is not, a, I think, good practice, right? So exceptions is a curious example. Why? Because uh, there's actually no example of gathering exceptions in a package. Not even JDK. If you, have, if you go to Java SQL, you will find SQL exception. Java naming, uh, naming exception, or JNDI something. But I, 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 I try to find somewhere an example in Java e or JDK where you find exceptions for exceptions. Agreed? So DTO is even worse. And now the question is, so why is something, this is an absolute defect. In code review, you would get, for me, no-go. So, and you could do whatever you like with the no-go. But why it's a defect 
If you get a change request and you use a story, however use case, however you call it, no one will ask you or no client or PM or product owner or scrum master, whoever, will not, no one will ask you, you know, just change a DAO. The user story will be, you know, uh, add some miles to the passenger on average flight. And you will try to find flight concept and there is no flight. Why not? Because we have DAOs, utils, commons, infrastructure, whatever. Agreed? So this is absolutely wrong. And uh, I have an uh, argument with an architect from X Tele Company told me, my thinking in business concepts requires the external company to know about business. With that structure, they can start coding without knowing what they are building. I mean, this is the end of Java, right? If someone would do something like this, I mean, the one single developer in Node.js, Python, whoever, who knows what he is doing or she is doing, right? You kill the whole development team. So they created no CRUDs, reports, they played with themselves until something unuseful was done without edit value for customer, but the whole team could start playing. I, no, no, agreed, it was the case, right? So, what would be my suggestion? My suggestion would be delete the whole thing. So, and introduce something like linear variant, let's say, Flight 21, right? And uh, the uh, Flight 21, so what I will do is thinking about concepts. Make their flights or flight. I really have no idea what is better. So sometimes it's flight, sometimes it's flight. It really depends on the uh, feel. The direction is going towards flights. Why? Because in RESTful interface, you are always exposing the path towards flights, convention over, over configuration, so don't make me think you have both flights as a, a rest hook and folder flights. Okay, this is my thinking, but if you call it flight, no problem, but you shouldn't call it util. Okay, then I would expect at least having a passenger, right? And airport. So if you take a look at the structure, so I think if someone will ask you to extend some flights, you will not look to the airport, probably you would open the package flights. I would say huge added value. And this is very old pattern, so I have no idea why, why it doesn't come up, because this pattern is called maximal cohesion, minimal coupling. So the packages have to gather concepts which are similar to each other and be maximal independent from other packages. Agreed? So this is the concepts of Java, of object-oriented programming, and hopefully functional programming as well. So similar functions has to be gathered together. So, Funny enough, if you launch Angular project with CLI, I don't like to discuss uh, uh, Angular right now, it creates, uh, creates something like this, which is interesting. And in all the Angular project I reviewed, the front end was functional, so it, the packages were, uh, were, were with domain concepts and the back end looked like before. Now, the problem is, of course, now I have flights, is everything there. So I have all the entities, all the facets, and so forth. So what I wanted to have is to, uh, to, to make now my developer life a little bit more convenient. And I started, I would say, 10 years ago to invent my own names. So if you invent something, it's always a very bad idea. So my names were like facet, service, I think model or entity or domain. So I changed the names a couple of times. So the problem with my own names is I always had to discuss the names with in all projects. At the beginning of the project, why you call it service and not facet, and why not endpoint? And the model could be entity, and so on. So, okay, stop talking. This is, um, um, and uh, this is Parkinson's law of triviality. Yeah? Parkinson's law of triviality, I don't dare to open the internet right now. You have to, to, to search for the definitions, really funny. It means the uh, more trivial the, uh, the, the, the decision to make, the more expensive it gets, and names are very trivial. So no one uh, uh, talked about the semantics. Everyone would like to change the names. So um, what happened then is um, I tried to find a standard, and I found one. And this is the, uh, the next slide. And the, slide, uh, the, uh, the standard is called BCE, stands for Boundary Control Entity. And the cool story is there is a book, a very old book. It predates UML, which is actually very good. And this is the standard from Ivor Jacobson. 
It's called also robustness diagrams, and all drawing tools on Earth know the icons, and the icons look like this. There's this boundary control entity. I don't, I don't like the, the names at all. I don't like boundary control on entity, but the cool story is I don't have to discuss them. So I never ever, someone, someone asked me why I chose the name, I point to the book, and then meeting is over. A huge benefit. Believe me, back then we spent hours discussing the layering. So, and the idea is simple. Entities are objects. Objects are Java objects with private fields, getters and setters are fully optional. So they don't even require it by JPA, bean validation, no one needs them. And if you like, you can put business logic there so we get real objects. And controls are optional, so don't start with controls. And boundary is uh, where you get at least one JAXOR as resource and usually one facade pattern. So usually I said always create two, like a facade, which is without JAXORES annotations, and just a JAXORES resource. So uh, I think two weeks ago I performed a review. There was very clean design that showed me a, 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 a mid-range projects with just one uh, class inside the boundary. So they used both because it was very easy to test. They didn't use response and didn't use headers, and they were very happy. So this is the only case I know with just one class in the boundary, but usually you have two. Um, one facet, gang of open facet, it is like in Java is like class, either a plain class or class annotated for, with stateless for speed, and one JAX arrest a facet with a nice path. Questions about that? And the cool story is CRUD, microservice CRUD, you get with three classes, JAX arrest resource flights resource, the facet and the entity, and you are set. Okay? So done. So what it means is it's ultra productive. So you just start thinking about the concept, flights, you put the flight boundary, your resource, entity manager get ejected, entity with, uh, with business name, and you are set. So even more productive you get with Java 8 because you can expose the entity via JSONB if you like, and um, we will talk about your question in a second. But um, um, this is the basic structure. Do you have questions about that? So now, and also in code reviews, for me, it's really important, not only for me, to understand the code. What you have to know is the application server is more or less stateless. It receives all the requests via HTTP. This is what happens right now in microservices. It's not like we have CORBA or RMI. 90% of all applications are talking, about, uh, uh, talking via uh, HTTP and JSON or web sockets, right? So, um, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the request or transaction flows from boundary to control an entity, and also accidental but very nice effect is it, uh, it is uh, ordered or sorted in the right order. So in the IDE, if you open that, boundary is on top, B, then C, and then E, which was not, never the case with my invention. So I really like that, the sorting because it always flows from the beginning to the end, okay? So now, if you would like to monitor business transactions, so then the boundary is your, is your friend. So put one meter annotations from micro profile and you can monitor our business transaction because per accident, whatever goes in is a transaction. Control does not matter. So why not? Boundary will grow. This is Java class. So you put more and more stuff in it and in one point of time is no more cohesive. So what it means is a flight will maintain flights and passengers, which is wrong, right? So what you can do, you can introduce another boundary or in another package, or a control. So what it means is you're removing stuff from the facade and putting the stuff to the boundary, uh, to the control. Got it? So it's fully optional. Architects hate it. Why? What we would like to see is entity control boundary. So in some projects, developers say, this is a stupid architecture. I have lots of empty boundaries. It's like, why you don't need controls then, right? Because architects force them to have always the same structure. And if someone forces you to have always the same structure, 80% of the source code is empty. A little bit exaggerated, but lots of code is empty. Agreed? So I like the bottom-up approach. So there's like clear structure, always the same. And if you need control, put it. If I open the package and I see controls, are, oh, something interesting is going on. There's like some calculation or computation. If there is no control, it means just crud. So th that's basically all. Now, such a boundary can communicate with other boundary by an entity can invoke another entity. Control can invoke another control and boundary can control another control, but the nice thing would be if the dependency would flow from boundary towards 
like this and, and not like that. So an entity should not, should not invoke control. So what it basically means, in my world, you can have cycles between components. And cycles are hated by architects. I say, OK, why you don't like cycles? Yeah, because we never ever can uh, extract the package and put in another microservice. And my question is always, how likely is it that we will you know, took the passengers, and it, it will never work, but let's say it could, and we'll create another microservice without any refactoring. And it's a zero possibility, I would tell you. OK? So cycles, you will get cycles. And uh, if, if uh, what, what uh, some people are doing, they hate cycles. So what, what they do, they, they, they launch uh, Structure 101 or the other tool, I forgot, uh, J-Architect. There's another one, Structure 101, J-Architect, and the third one. And it will detect the cycles, Sonar J. Sonar J is the, is the third one. It will detect uh, cycles between components and what they do, refactoring. So they can extract all the classes into a package. What's the problem with the package? They cannot find a business name for the package. Because if you extract all the entities from passengers, flights, if you have one entity from passenger and one entity from flight and put both entities which have cycled to each other to one package, you cannot find a proper name for the package. And they call it domain, persistence, whatever sounds nice and doesn't mean anything. Agreed? You have to. So for me, cycles are better with proper naming than one meaningless package without any cycles, and no one even knows why cycles are bad within a war, which is supposed to be a microservice. So I'm talking about not between two wars, inside a war, which is a microservice, which is per definition has to be somehow small. Questions? So we covered the basic structure, hopefully. Right? So uh, is someone against things that DAO services and interfaces are a better way of structuring? It could be. And it could be wrong. But uh, I get more and more projects which are on my, on my side says so actually easy. If you think a little bit about the business logic, it's very easy to structure. So and, and in my eyes, if you don't think about the business logic, then stop coding. I mean, what do you like to do then, right? So um, let's see what we got. Yeah. Like, so you want to put another microservice, so you take mm -hmm. packages and you mm -hmm. create the microservice out of it. What do you do? You copy the, for example, yeah. This is, this is a very common practice. It will happen that you will li like to split your microlith into two uh, microservices. Then what I always do, I copy the whole package and make it compile. So you will find you know, a missing link between the entities. Then you will have to introduce a JAXRS endpoint to do something with it. But this is, regardless of what you are doing, uh, you, will, you will have to do this. And in an ancient project, we had to do this. And the project was well structured with interfaces. And what they, what, when they, why they introduced interfaces were to hide cycles. So with an interface, you can break a cycle, which doesn't mean that you can just split apart the packages. It worked even less. Because um, we, we were able to split it, right? And, uh, and then there were lots of compiler errors, and we had to delete all the interfaces, all the impulse, and stuff like that. OK, reuse. The first one, I can tell you, reuse doesn't happen. So, and if it happens, you know that it, that it is uh, reasonable. I'll give you an example. For instance, an insurance company, if there is an algorithm, everyone has to reuse the algorithm. Discussion is over. It's not like every, each department or room can invent their own uh, life insurance algorithm computation or whatever. Won't happen. Right? So if you have a um, very complex machine learning algorithm, no one will reinvent that. So you can encapsulate this thing uh, behind a JAXRS, and it's a huge success story. What I'm talking about is like micro reuse, what we are hoping for years, that we like an interface or something is going to be reused. In my observation, it never happens. Why? We are all developers, and none of us, uh, before it starts hacking and coding, will look at a, a, reposit a Nexus repository and hope that it will find one class which can be reused. I, I, don't, I never saw this in action. So usually, if you can, you will start hacking. And the next problem is the departments, if they have budget, they will try to replicate whatever they can. They, they, they don't like to be depending on other departments, so they will code whatever they can. So in reality, I will have to say, reuse just does not happen. If it has to happen, you know it. So as I said, machine learning, uh, hard algorithms, everyone recognized from us there is some added value, and everyone will, will like to reuse that, I hope. Right? So if you have a central node tracking system, you will have to call it. If you have a central payment system, you also have to call it. You cannot just invent your own credit card company. Agreed? Hopefully not. So um, reuse. 
So what it means is, um, because it doesn't happen, uh, microservices happened, and what microservices are about is copy and paste, actually. So we don't even try to have one interface uh, shared across multiple uh, microservices. We have uh, multiple in interfaces, and they are, they are similar, but from different point of view of the domain. This is called bounded context. There's even a name for that. And uh, so copy and paste is a good thing. So don't even try to invent shared jars. This is what I'm talking about. If you have shared jars between wars, my first question is, who is in charge of the shared jar? What happens in the next version? Will you redeploy all the wars? And there are actually no answers. If there is no answers, delete it. So this is my, uh, my approach. If there is no answers, just don't use it. Um, I hope this is enough. So modularization, just packages. What's absolutely not allowed to have in my projects inside a war jars. So um, in all observations I did is the following. The jar has to be a Maven module. And what I look is at the version. And what happens in all projects which use multi-module Maven projects, they have identical version for everything, which is stupid if you think about this, right? Because you will have you know, to recompile and bump the version to all modules. The question is why I need the jar then, if I have to rebuild everything at once. I would understand a jar if the jar would have a dedicated version. It would be, it would be maintained by a single team, and a city stands of the jar, and then you will have like you know build metrics which test different versions. This would be one thing. So what it means is we do not allow any jars, except the jars have different version than the main war. And ears are forbidden absolutely. So we only have wars, and inside the wars we only have a nice package structure, but no jars. Yes. Yeah, um, we, you, you won't be allowed to share entities. What do you do in this particular case? Hopefully, one microservice has a system test. System test is not allowed to use the entities from the war because then you cannot test it properly. So what do you, I, would, I would expect that a system that has its own copy of the entities, then you can, you can test it in different versions. So you can have you know, newer versions of system tests can access all the versions of the microservice if nothing is shared, otherwise it is not doable. So, and what happens then is the other team gets your system tests, it can borrow the entities and they will have to maintain the entities by themselves. So, um, if the entities are shared, everything is coupled on the entities, the question then is the same story. The entities are versioned and the version is increased, then you will have to redeploy all the microservices, then I will ask you why you have microservices at all. My suggestion would be to collapse everything to one war, what we frequently do in projects. So if I see, see such a thing, everything is, is, is depending on a shared jar, so okay, then let's collapse everything to a war, rethink the architecture, and if you have good ideas, then split it again. Agreed? What's wrong with you? No one agrees in project with me, and everyone agrees on conferences. So it's like in project, a huge, huge discussion every time. Oh, this, but this is easy. This is like, you know, um, exceptions. So now, um, it is actually trivial. Um, I could show you this. But um, if you, huge efforts are made in exception handling inside microservices like Jakarta and Java 8. If you think ab about this, it does not make any sense anymore. So exceptions were, hierarchy were very important in CORBA or RMI. Why? Because they were actually serialized and went across the wire. And on the other side, we knew what happened, right? So with JAXRS, no one, no one is able to see your exception, it shouldn't see your exception, because I mean, if you know a JAXRS or JAXRS, a JavaScript client sees your exception, something went wrong. Agreed? So what means exception, you can create exceptions just for fun. They have nothing to do with architecture anymore. So, and what is the best exception ever? If it doesn't happen, of course, what it happens is exception which maps itself into HTTP status code. And we have it called web application exception. So what it means in microservices, Jakarta E, all exceptions have to inherit from web application exception. And then of course discussion explodes, or IDEX says you, you cannot do this. Everything is de depends on JAXRS, like yes, everything depends in our project from HTTP, done. And I don't think it will change soon, right? So, and, and uh, plan B, yeah. Very good, not in exception package. For me, exceptions are like objects, and I treat them like objects. So it means if you have, for instance, flight canceled exception, I will put it, if it occurs in entities, 
into the package entity. If this will be flight validation exception, and it happens uh, because a, a flight a validator control throws the exception, I put the exception to the control. So what it means in my project, I don't have a lot of classes, but the classes are renamed constantly and moved around constantly if, if, if I learn more about the domain logic. This is the, the thing. So it's not like it's a lot of faster because you have to think about it. The, 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 and, um, and I think good or developers, someone who would like to develop great system will do this. And, uh, uh, and one so 9 to 5 developer doesn't care. So 9 to 5 developer would require give me a package, I put all the exception and go home. But this is not maintainable software. OK? So this is about exceptions. And now comes the trick. If you have EJBs, you can create an exception which inherits from web application exception and is annotated with a single annotation application exception. And the application exception annotations prevents the container to create stack traces. So you get beautiful exception without any stack traces in logs. And you will see your HTTP status code directly with one liner. Never happens in my project. You know what they are doing? Exception hierarchies, one, everything inherits from runtime. Then, if they are good, they know about exception mappers. So they're mapping the exception, the exception mapper from JAXRS. If they don't know exception mappers, huge try catch blocks. And which try you know, to, 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 to extract the interesting information through this text trace and create HTTP status codes. And at the end of the project, they say Java is in inefficient. Yeah, no one told you to do this. OK? If someone would de develop something like this in Node.js, it would be even worse. Right? Exception. Done. So I, on my blog, are lots of exception examples. I don't, don't like to quote a lot because I would like to go through all the topics. So this is uh, my idea. But if you say stop, it's too much theory. I would like to see some code, lots of code, so no problem. But patents. Unfortunately, all patents are dead. So most of the creational gang of hope patents were killed by dependency injection. So what it means is what, it can, what I can do, or what I do actually in my code reviews, I search actively for factories, abstract factories, initial context lookup, and whatever I found, I try to delete it, or the least mark as deleted. Complete deprecation, doesn't make any sense. Dep uh, dependency injection in Java is, I think, 10 years ago already, was so powerful. What you can even do, you can replace classes if you don't like them afterwards. So you can say, specializes, extends, and you are set. So there is no need for factories, class for name, new instance, configuration, and whatever. Done. That. So. Um, what else? Uh, Builder is still useful for, for business logic. Um, AOP, all flavors of AOP are, were killed, are killed by decorator and interceptors, so they are long gone. Um, what, um, what, what, what remains? So chain of resp responsibility patterns, something like this can happen. A command pattern is more or less killed by message-driven beans and CDI events. CDI events are very lightweight. This is nothing else than command. Um, not the pure form of command pattern, pure form will be undo. So what it basically means is, if you see a gang of four pattern in your code, it is suspicious. So um, a good Java E project is where you don't even recognize it's Java E. You always will see business code. This is the best possible Java E project. This is what we have, right? So now, this were gang of four patterns. J2E patterns, even worse. So like, all of the patterns were killed. We can usually go through service locator dead, data access object dead was killed by entity manager. Um, session facade uh, dead, we don't need it anymore because uh, there are no, no entity beans anymore. And uh, value object was completely wrong named. DTO, now it's interesting, that's also your question. Uh, what uh, in my project, DTOs are absolutely allowed if the structure is significantly different to entities. Never happens. What happens, I review right now, tomorrow again, a project. I already saw 70 entities and 70 DTOs, which made, I had no time to look at the source code. But it's at least suspicious, you know, even number of entities and DTOs, and uh, the most of them were named the same. So what it basically means, someone, again, creates get here, set here. Why? Because they won't like to have decoupling. And a decoupling, for me, means in one point of time, they should diverge. If they're always the same, for the whole life cycle of the project, there is no decoupling. So what it means, DTOs are dead. We, DTOs can be replaced with uh, JSON objects. JSON P can be replaced with JSON B. And now you ask a very good question at the beginning. And uh, as I understand, you can re-ask again. 
And uh, I think I know what you wanted to ask, but if not. Should I press something? Yeah, no, just speak. Yeah, so uh, in my project, I use uh, the same pattern, CBE pattern. Ver and, uh, did it work I well? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. BC, yeah? Right. Okay, E not. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, uh, I, I try to enforce the model, dr model driven uh, design, domain driven, div driven design, yeah. uh, which means that I do not want to create any details at all, and I yeah. always want to use entities uh, for the uh, for DTOs and for the use of DTOs. But sometimes when you have the complex uh, uh, get query, uh, yeah. I mean, get method in the RESTful web service. Uh, you have to, you, you cannot uh, uh, encapsulate all the data in one entity. Yes. So, so in this case, I, I always create DTO. Yeah. Is there any way to avoid that? No. Um, it could be, but uh, mm -hmm. what you can do with Java 8, you can have one Java object with public fields. I saw you uh, uh, showed you this the session before. It's like in JSON B of um, just public fields, and this is automatically serialized to JSON using Java 8. And now the cool story: um, this is actually nothing new; it's old it's from JPA. You can cre create a query like select new, com air hex flights and so forth, and the name of the object, and the constructor is going to be called. Mm -hmm. And you can create on the fly from the entity, which was supposed to go against an JPA entity, and create just DTOs without the stupid getters and setters. But then this JSON object is going to be significantly different to the entity. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? No? Yes? There is a select new query in JPA. Mm -hmm. Select new JPA. And what select new does, it will instantiate a a, a object you like, we will call it DTO, and the parameters have to match the object you are extracting. So it's like select new something and then uh, f dot name on f dot duration from flight entity and so forth, right? So mm -hmm. and this will this happen for you? It's highly performant. It is a, actually also great optimization. Yes, that's what I do. So this is a native query design. Which no, na named query. You, this can be even the uh, the query no. at the entity. This is the cool stuff. No, I, I, I said native query, not named query. Yeah, but uh, I, I talk about named query. It even works oh, okay. with named queries. Okay, yeah. And there's another trick. You can even have views in a, in a database, so with specific uh, queries, and map them to the DTO. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would say, okay, this is for me a no-brainer because this DTO is obviously different to the entity, so it's added value. It's faster than go for it. Okay. But what I see in my projects, entity, mappers, and, and DTOs, and in one project, I showed the client that they actually 70% of the source code were DTOs and mappers. And this was not a mapping company, right? <laughs> Thanks. OK, you, you got the, what do you have to remember? Search in the internet, JPA select new, and you will find the answer. Very good. Um, now, domain-specific libraries, a very interesting point, because you cannot avoid them. The best example is POI. Uh, Excel and, and, and Word, Microsoft uh, document format uh, readers, uh, and I cannot demand from my developers, look, uh, we will implement by our, with Java E is not a problem. It's a huge problem. But these libraries are treated differently. They become part of the platform. So if we have Docker or clouds, what we do, we create a base image with POI, and all the microservices are relying on the same base image with the POI, but this is an exception from the rule. This can be POI. That can be specific uh, driver to the whole system, whatever is you know outside our bound or uh, encryption library or machine learning library, which is not part of the platform, but it should be part of the platform. Okay, I think it is easy to identify. What I don't mean by that is like you know Jakarta Commons Lang, which is uh, nice to have, or Jakarta Commons configuration, which is absolutely avoidable in, in, in Java E, for instance, right? So this is not this what I'm talking about. I'm talking a lot more about encryption and uh, Apache POI, for instance. Good idea. And cross-cutting functions, matrix login configuration, a good one. So if project requires metrics, for me, there is no difference then between metrics and flights. So I will create a top-level package metrics, but not util and hide you know, the fact that we need metrics. If we need metrics, we need them. So uh, there is a metrics. And of course, if you have one, uh, one 
one package flights, and then you get metrics, caching, and whatever. It means like a you know, playful team which would like to create lots of investigation. It's a bad sign, but it could happen. You know what I mean? So there is no distinction between the business requirement to track something, tracking metrics or, or caching, and flights. So then it's on the same level. The, it was never the case. What can happen is, um, and it happened already here in the structure, that this JAXRS configuration does not really belong to any package because it's a top level package. And uh, the JAXRS configuration is just on the top level because uh, it, is actually, it belongs to everywhere. So if you have cross cutting, uh, this can happen, enums or whatever, it's like enum with the CDI events, which defines the CDI events, then it could be in the top level. And recently, I reviewed a project that had 20, 20 top-level classes in, in the root. It's not a bad thing. Uh, what it is, a tree structure, you know? The, the leaves are more, more specific than the, than the nodes. So you don't really have a package for them, applications, and then you have an on the same level. No, because I, I, I never create packages with meaningless names. An application is like util. Or it's on the same level as business. Yeah, I don't. What do you mean by application specific? JAXRS configuration. But this is not, not, a, not a lot. It's a f at most 10, uh, usually three. So JAXRS is usual. I have to enum sometimes, or you get, I don't know what, right? Some annotations, qualifiers, probably if you have something, it's not a lot. If there is a lot, then try to find a good name. Application. Yeah, it could be, but right now it doesn't sound right in this context, right? Agreed? So I have five minutes to go. Any, any questions? So then uh, the most important thing uh, in the whole uh, Java A stuff is if we have an airport, then we get, of course, a package. Um, let's go with the class. Um, Java class then airport.boundary, because we have the layer boundary. And then, because we have rest, full, flights, resource. And this is um, um, flights resource. and the path is flights. Done. And if the concept is different, then we have a different <coughs> path here. So that there will be no flights rather than movies and movies path. And um, having that is great because you can use the API without reading through documentation. This happens in the last year a lot. So lo lo more and more projects are not restful, but at least consistent. Like, and by the way, this is nothing special. I don't know who started you know, in early 2000. If you build just websites, it was the same story. Images, there were images. So we went to server images, and with the index on, you saw all the images. Images slash JPEG 2 dot JPEG or whatever, and you saw the JPEG, right? So this is like, it was always the case in web. Um, so this was just folders. And the entry point is the folder. So we have flights, LH42 is Lufthansa flight, so we get one resource which returns the flight, one returns all flights. Delete w could cancel, doesn't have to delete, can cancel the flight. And, um, and now the question is, uh, in projects, now it's less, but uh, it was uh, the huge question two years ago. What about, for instance, searching for, flight, uh, for, for, a, for a flight with, uh, with passengers with green eyes and, I don't know, Java knowledge? So then it doesn't fit in the get parameters anymore, and then, what, what you should do, of course, is to th listen to the person who is talking to you and what they are talking about is no more flight rather than search, right? So the discussion switches. They are no more interested in flights. They, they're interested in searches. And then ask, would you like to search for passengers? Of course, and for, air uh, for air airports and airplanes? Of course, everything, right? So then I introduce a top-level folder searches or search and now we are talking. So with post, I can post a JSON object with parameters I like and, and get the result back, for instance. OK? So there should be no excuse. Just think about what your clients would like to tell you. Extract the substantives. And the substantives are ideas for top-level packages called components and the resources. And the resources, if you are RESTful, you don't have to call them RESTful. And which is not RESTful, like uh, get all flights in the path. This is like. You could, there's nothing, right? Questions? I think we have still two minutes to go. It's so the first talk without coding. It was also fun. Nothing can break, right? Yeah. 
I, I, this is the, the thing. I hope what I told you is nothing unusual. Okay. What I noticed an old book is was called um, "Applying UML and Patterns," and uh, also there's a UML in the title. It's, it's a very good book, so it's not usual with UML. But on Wikipedia, you will find entries, and this is was called uh, "Software Patterns," but not uh, is like more patterns on how to apply the patterns. And one pattern I already mentioned is maximal cohesion, minimal coupling. The other one uh, was called like um, artificial creation or something like this. Is like if domain objects are no, not enough, you will have to introduce a class which doesn't make any sense from business perspective, but it has to be there. Like for instance, the JAXRS resource, we only needed to have the annotations. So this is a great way of thinking. So just start with the business and then add some technical stuff and not the other way around. What I see in Java E, they introduce 50 layers, and at the end they forgot what they would like to build. So right, this is like, this is what I don't get. And then they complain Java E is not efficient. It's like what you build has nothing to do with Java E. Okay? Yeah. Application context? No, it won't work. It has to be in, in class. It has to be, no, no, it won't work there. Uh, what you could do, you could create a web XML, but I'm against that. It's, web XMLs are, or, or XML is actually forbidden. We have Kubernetes on Docker config. All other config is fully optional. And web XML, you have to, 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 to look at two things. You know, web XML and the JAXRS is too much. So write simple code and delete as much code as possible. And Java is then good enough if you don't even recognize that. And a Java rookie will look at the code and say, okay, this is the great possible platform, the best possible platform. This is what, what should really happen, and it's absolutely possible. So enjoy Java 1, also called Code 1, and hopefully with some coffee. I was told at 3 p.m. there's coffee. And by the way, if you don't like JavaScript, I have one talk about killing frameworks with PWA or whatever, and I will hack just JavaScript without any frameworks to show you that you can throw away most of the frameworks. Should be more controversial than this one. So, okay. Then, um, thank you.